Okay, um, so we're live now. So welcome everyone to uh, Secrets to Overcome Social Anxiety. Uh, my name is Sam Lee and along with uh, Roy, we'll be conducting how you can improve uh, Secrets to Overcome Social Anxiety. Um, that's okay, Seth. No worries. So that's okay. Uh, try your best to have a good connection. And yeah. So what I'm going to teach now, um, what, what I'm going to tell you about today from my end is really knowing how to improve on your social skills and confidence uh, so you can get rid of that social anxiety when you meet people, when you see people build that confidence by skilling you up with social skills so you'll be able to um, confidently connect with people. And that's one of the ways that uh, you can overcome social anxiety. Uh, before, I used to have a lot of social anxiety as well. But throughout time, the more people you connect with, uh, the less anxiety you'll get. And that's uh, proven. And um, just before we get started, if you guys have any questions, because today's going to be very interactive, feel free to unmute yourself and ask questions. And uh, me and Roy will be happy to um, answer any questions you may have. And I'll be starting first. And then the second part will be Roy going to do his part. So yeah, let's keep keep going. Uh, if you're on Facebook, uh, connect with me on Facebook. It's got uh, facebook.com slash connect with confidence. You can like the page or something like that. And then you'll get, uh, I, I post a lot of content on how you can improve on your social skills, free content. And then, yeah, see if you, if you guys can benefit out of it. So I'm pretty sure everyone here is from Sydney. Uh, we had a counter. So yeah, Sydney represent, which is good. So I want to ask you guys a question. On a scale of 1 to 10, how confident are you in your social skills based on your current situation? So you can type in a chat box. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, where do you lie your social skills at? So feel free to type in a chat box. Look at the bottom and then let me know. Yeah. Wow. Roy says a 10. <laughs> nice. Very confident. Yeah. JP says seven and Nat says eight. Cool. So that's two of two people actually. Uh from JP Fernandez. So Rose said only four. Uh depending on what setting, Prue said seven or eight. Okay, let me just add me this person in. Hmm. Okay, cool. Sounds good. So everyone's got all sorts of problem. Uh, it's good to be honest. So you don't, uh, yeah. So that's how we can help you out further as well. So let me. I can let you know that uh, social skills is a transferable skill. Uh, it's like learning a new language. Uh, say for example, you want to learn, uh, Spanish. In the same way, social skills can be taught and be, and can be applied. So your skills can be improved as well. Welcome, Michael. Appreciate you joining in. So what is the impact of having confidence in your social skills? And here is uh, what some of my clients say about this that have uh, gone through my program to improve on the social skills. They, before they join, they say that connecting with people is scary. They have low self-esteem when joining, low, low self-esteem when meeting new people. Uh, they, they just don't have the confidence. Uh, confidence in work, they feel nervous and shy when it comes to meeting new people. They want to grow their network, but they're, but they're scared to connect with people. So where do we start? So my goal for you today is to spend the next 30 minutes learning how to improve on the number you just wrote down. So some of you said four, some of you said seven or eight, etc. So yeah. And this is my uh, type of clients. If you fall into any of these categories, you're qualified for me to help you. So if you're lacking social skills, lacking social confidence, it's a pretty extensive list. Uh, you have social media anxiety. You have social anxiety, which you're here today because of. Uh, you have anxiety, depression. You're shy, impersonated when connecting with people. You're nervous. You're introverted. You want to improve your communication skills, such as ice breaking and starting an interesting conversation. Uh, you don't know how to build trust when connecting with people. Uh, you want to grow a big network, but you don't know how to. You basically have uh, not much friends and want to build more friendships. 
be promoting your job, be profitable in your business, uh, you want to be in a relationship, or, or you might have autism as well. So uh, I want you guys to type in the chat box, which of these resonates with you, which is which is something, what is something that strikes you here from all of these points here. So I'll just give you a couple of minutes. I'll just give you like a minute or so. Uh, type in the chat box, which ones uh, that you lack at the moment or you have. Feel free to type in the chat box. See. <clears throat> All right. So first chat is not really on a list, but you want to improve speaking and presenting. Okay. You get nervous doing this. That's okay. So it's all about public speaking, right? So yeah, that's really cool. No dramas. All right, I'll just keep going. So, okay, JP wants to improve networking skills and social media anxiety. All right, sounds great. So Michael says he's lacking social confidence. That's cool. And Roy said anxiety, depression, build social skills for more friends want to be in a relationship, nervous to connect with others. So that's cool. No worries. Thanks for sharing. And that says usually nervous when connecting with people. Okay. No worries. So your permission today. Uh, thanks for sharing just then. I might speak a little bit fast. I might have a half Aussie accent. I want to provide you valuable content and uh, an offer towards the end for you. So just a little bit about myself. Like I said, my name is Sam Lee. So I'm a social skills coach. So I coach people on social skills so they can be more confident around people and also to grow the network. And I help a lot of uh, people doing business because uh, interacting with clients and partners, et cetera, is the key to success, if that makes sense. And uh, I'm also a two-time published author and a motivational speaker. Uh, I've been uh, uh, featured in a couple of local radio stations in Sydney, uh, I've been doing speaking gigs at UNSW University, State Library of New South Wales, and I've been doing uh, corporate workshops for the New South Wales government and uh, some other rep reputable um, com corporate companies and my books in Dimmings bookstores as well. So um, just a little bit about my qualifications. So I'm a certified life coach on the left-hand side, and I'm also a, a neuro linguistic programming certi certified as well. Uh, also known as NLP. And just sort of, I want to tell you a little bit about my story. So on the left, right, and, and these are my two books. So on the left-hand side, The Social Way. So I wrote this book in 2019, just before COVID started. And the reason why I wrote this book, The Social Way, is because before I was very shy, I was very introverted, and I lacked that confidence when it comes to uh, meeting people. And it got to a point where I was very vulnerable to being bullied. And so... um. How I got bullied was just all, all kinds of reasons. And I uh, got to a point where I was hospitalized for uh, be, uh, under depression because of um, yeah being bullied by people, et cetera, et cetera. And that actually affects your mental health. And yeah, I've been there uh hospital for a couple of times. And so I said to myself, I'm going to write this book. And I'm going to help people that are similar to my shoes, uh, that, that are very vulnerable to being bullied, to connect with like-minded people. and to get rid of those negative people. So yeah, that's how you can have a, have a better mental health, if that makes sense. And so I just want to spread the word and get people to connect with like-minded people. And as, as well as on the right-hand side here, Connect With Confidence on the right-hand side, uh, this is my coaching business. So my company is called Connect With Confidence. So I, I help people to connect with uh, people with confidence. And as they all say, how to professionally build rapport and connect with people that matter to you. That's what I, not, I do. So my vision is very simple, to make the world a safer place to live in with ethical social skills. So I believe that if everyone has good social skills, the world can be a safer place to live in. So that's my motivation and my vision. 
So my role is very simple. I help entrepreneurs, small business owners, and corporate professionals uh, to have social confidence and to be able to connect with anyone at any time. So I want to ask you guys a question. What is the hardest part when connecting with people? Uh, feel free to type in the chat box. What do you think is the hardest part when you communicate and interact with people? Feel free to type in the chat box. All right, so Nat says, keep the conversation flowing. Yeah, okay. So later on, I'll teach you a little bit. Uh, I'll be talking a little bit about conversation skills. So you can go from small talk to long talk. So Rose say, knowing what to say. All right, cool. Thanks for sharing. Uh, and Prue says, I think it's hard if you think about yourself and not the other person. Yeah, they're all valid answers. So it's really cool. And uh, Michael says, understanding what their mind thinks. Okay, cool. Interesting. Thanks for sharing, everyone. And like I said before, I I help I help people to go from shy, introverted, nervous, or lack of confidence to connect with confidence in 90 days without having to feel awkward at all. Uh, JP says, not to mumble or make weird sounds. Wondering what others think. Okay, cool. Thank you. So it comes to the obvious question. How do I do it? How do I improve my social skills to a level where I can connect confidently and professionally? So I want to I want to ask you guys a question. Do you want to use the process of try and error to and hope for the best to improve your social skills? Or you want to use a proven system that will allow you to successfully connect with people professionally? So type in the chat box. Do you prefer trial and error or do you prefer a system to help you out? Okay, JP says system. Michael said trial and error. Interesting answers. Let's see who else. Anyone else want to type? <laughs> uh, okay, really cool. All right, cool. Prue said trial and error and system. Cool. So that's good. Everyone's got different answers actually. System, trial and error, and a bit of both. Nice. So uh, my system, so actually this the reason why I say system is I have a system called the Manetic Connector Program that will allow you to connect with people professionally and, and also to grow your network. And uh, so it's not right for everyone. So if you don't want to connect with 100% success rate with people building trust, rapport, and grow your network, it's not right for you if you don't want to. So I built this system to help people to go from shy, introverted, nervous, and lack of confidence to become successful networkers and grow a profitable network. And it's designed to give you confidence when it comes to connecting with people, helping you help you to grow your network, and also give you influential powers and fame. And I'll talk about that uh, later on. And let's keep going. So now I'm going to uh, show you one of my... Uh, previous clients. Her name is Hadar and she runs her own uh, English coaching business as a teacher and also works as a teacher uh, teaching English. So this is one of my clients. So have a listen to what she says. Hi, my name is Hadar Mansour. I've been a teacher for a very long time and I am now turning instead of being working for other people, I want to have my own business. So in order to have my own business, I need to be able to connect with other people and let them know what my business is about. It's not just teaching English or teaching. Um, I need to connect with other people and learn about what they actually need. And this way I will improve my program and my website and I'll be able to actually have a functioning business. It's a scary move. I have to change a lot of things and the way I think and the way I do things. And this is where I met Sam Lee. And I have done his foundation course, which has helped me a great deal, has given me a lot more confidence, a lot more ideas how to go about approaching people, how to start a conversation. 
and I have actually joined his next level up group because I'm very happy and very appreciative of the way he works and the way I feel and the confidence that I have been gaining. And this will help me not only in business, but in a lot of other ways. Before I was very shy and the only time I open up is in front of kids. Now I can open up in front of adults and I can do the things that I really want to do. So thank you very much. And I really appreciate that help. Thank you. All right. So she was just one of my uh, clients. And yeah, she was before like she was very anxious around people. And then that's why she went for, uh went help to get some help from me. And this is just uh, another one. Her name is Keith. Uh, Keith. I like to share my experience with completing the Connect with Confidence program, uh, helped by Sam Lee. And I like to say that I, I really liked the way the notes were really easy to follow and to read, which was which was really good. I also like the fact that. Sam was there to guide us through video conference once a week to see our progress and to to guide us with our, our experience in applying the materials that that through the program. I look forward to using the materials I've learned through Sam. And once again, thank you very much. All right, so just another one. So now I'm, I'm gonna talk about a case, a case study. So this Arpit, he's actually another client of mine. So he, uh, so he actually is an immigration agent by trade and business, and he came to me because, uh, before he was very shy, he was very introverted, and he was similar to my shoes before. And he, he said he came to me because he wanted to build uh more trust with his clients by socializing better, and that's how he came to me. And uh, after uh, having a chat with him, I was able to find a lot of blind spots from him. So what I mean by blind spot is uh, things that is stopping him from being able to connect with people at a deeper level. And after being coached by me, he essentially felt more confident around people, being able to build instant rapport with people and to be profitable in his business by building trust through socializing with them first. So my, my reason for sharing uh, Arvid's story, I. Uh, you could be in the same situation. Uh, you just don't know how to connect with people. You don't know what to say. You don't know how to build trust with them. And uh, yeah, that's, that's why Arthur came to me. And just a little quickly about what he said. So, unfavorable people skills is the worst bad habit that anyone could have. Uh, we keep doing the same thing over the years, but no, it is harmful when connected with people around us or other individual friends. Uh, Sam's workshop provided all the practical approaches to help you identify the bad habits which you have developed and assisting to cause self-awareness when communicating with others. So it is a great program that we we'll recommend to people from all walks of life. Uh, what I've learned is practicable and applicable skills in our daily communication in various scenarios. Great workshop, Sam. Thank you for the invitation to your program. So, what, so what's been most useful so far? And could this be you? So now what, so I'm going to go into the content right now. I'm going to uh, go through how to make an entrance, uh, how to have a good uh, introductory greeting, all the way to conversation skills and how to connect with people professionally. So I want to ask you guys a question. How many seconds does it take for someone to form a first impression of you? So feel free to type in the chat box. That's, uh, that's the right answer. And if someone uh, gets it right, I'll give you a prize for that if you can answer it. So how many seconds does it take for someone to form an impression of you? Rose, Prude, uh, Fernandez, Michael, what do you think? Rose said uh, one second. Okay, cool. How about others? Prude said two seconds. Wow, okay. One more second than Rose. How about JP, Fernandez, and Michael? Okay, JP said 0 0.7 seconds. Okay, that's the first time I've seen uh, 0 0.7 seconds. Interesting. And how about Michael? Let's see what he says. All right, two seconds. Okay, 
So I guess the two people that are the closest is two seconds. So actually, I can let you know that it takes someone three seconds to form a first impression for someone of someone. So I didn't make I didn't make this up. So this is backed by science that where well, uh it takes someone fr first three seconds. Uh, in three seconds they will know uh what kind of person you are and how to make an impression, etc. So here are the pros and cons of knowing how to greet people properly. Guess what? If you know how to greet people properly, you know what to say, you make a good impression. Guess what? You make a good, a positive impression. You know how to ice break properly. You have confidence, charisma, positivity. You'll be successful and there's respect and there's professionalism as well. And guess what? If you don't do, if you don't do it correctly, you'll make a negative first impression. You have embarrassment, awkwardness, rejection, shy, nervous, turn off, and it's not professional at, at all. So I always got start with this. When you greet someone, it's very it's very uh easy. So you always say that hi, what's your name? And then you say hi, my name is Sam. My name is Prue. My name is Rose. My name is Fernandez. My name is Michael. And once you say hi, what's your name? You will smile and also perform a handshake, a firm handshake. And you can also say, uh, in in Aussie terms, how are you going? How are you going today? So it's just like steps one, two, three, very easy. But sometimes some people get nervous. They don't know how to even say this, uh, these three simple steps when you when you converse with people. And also, I want to ask you guys a question. The handshake is very speaks volume for itself because uh, it determines how confident you are as, as a person when you connect with the receiver. So who is the kind of person here that initiates the handshake here? And who is the one that is the passive kind of person that waits for someone to shake their hand? Feel free to type in the chat box. Are you the initiator or are you the passive kind of person? Let's see. Let's see if I can get some answers. All right. Pro initiates. Sounds good. Abba, Rose, Fernandez, and Michael. All right. JP says initiator and that says passive. Okay, cool. You are willing to connect. Okay, cool. So let me tell you why you should initiate the handshake. Because you are, uh, it shows that you're willing to connect. Like I said just then, you're open, you're friendly, and you're sincere and genuine. <clears throat> so the handshake actually uh, is like a, it's a body language. So uh, the way you perform your handshake is uh, shows how confident you are as a person, uh, your personality type, whether you're shy or you're outgoing, and how sincere you want to connect with the person. <laughs> So I know uh, before COVID, like it disrupted everyone. Uh, no one's doing a handshake. Everyone changed to different kinds of contacts, such as uh, fist palms or elbow knocks, or they just don't make contact at all. They just say like a performance nod or something like that. But we're back in this handshake right now. Uh, and, always, and always perform a firm handshake. So what I mean by this is uh, when you shake someone's hand, Make sure you have a firm grip. Don't do something like a soft grip where the person won't feel your your the power of the firm grip or a very hard or do a very uh very strong handshake that, that make that causes pain for other other person. Just a medium strength firm grip handshake that's gonna help you. And make sure you have a good focal tonality as well. I believe that if your voice is when it can when your voice is music to other people's ears you're on the right track. So some people are very loud. Some people are very soft when it, when it comes to speaking to people. You need to have that projection where it's a medium level uh, strength of the spectrum as well. If you guys have any questions, feel free to type in the chat box. Happy to answer any questions you may have. And make sure you smile when you perform the introduction to your handshake. A smile goes a long way. It shows you're a friendly person when you connect with the person. So if you have like not not smiling or you're you're un, you're sad unhappy, that's that's gonna affect your your impression as well. And this is Jeanette, one of my client client case study. So when I shook her hand in person, she gave me a very soft handshake. 
So that didn't, uh, and then she said, that's why I couldn't feel anything uh, when I performed the handshake because she, did, she didn't firm up the handshake. And that's what the small stuff. Are you a, uh, let me ask you this question. Are you the kind of sensitive person that kind of takes offense with, of what people say sometimes? Or are you the insensitive type where you let go of sometimes some people might say something wrong and you're okay with it? So type in the chat box, are you sensitive or you're in, are you an insensitive person? All right, Michael said extreme. Extreme sensitive, okay. What about other people? Insensitive, okay. Fernandez said in, yeah, JP and that insensitive. How about Prue and Rose? Let's see what I say. Rose says sensitive person, okay. No dramas. Sensitive. All right, let's keep going. So um, I just want to let you know, because if you are sensitive, maybe it's time to be less sensitive. So, okay, Prue say I'm sensitive, but I think people can have a lot going on, so can't be too sensitive. Yep, so uh, if you're sensitive, uh, try to be insensitive. So that's how I normally coach people to have a good tolerance level. And I have this workshop called the Tolerance Level Workshop. Basically, this Tolerance Level Workshop is to make you be less sensitive and help you to be easygoing as a person so you can attract people. So people, so this is kind of like a, a form of positivity. Uh, if you're positive, you'll let go uh, little stuff like that and et cetera. So why should you sweat the small stuff? Because if you don't sweat the small stuff, it'll promote you more as a positive person. You'll be likable. You'll be careful. You're mentally strong as well. And you also can build instant rapport if you are less sensitive as a person. Any questions? So this is just some example. So uh, like if someone says something to you like such as, sorry, can you stand a little bit further away because I'm claustrophobic? That, right, that person right there is giving me the shits. Oh, let's go straight to the point, be more specific. Sorry, I've been an odor around here. Sorry, I'm on the phone right now. It's getting a bit too personal. I, I prefer not to say. Uh, what are you doing over the weekend? A bit personal. I prefer not to say. And you scumbag. Just joking. That, that was just for laugh, but no one's going to say that. But yeah, like, I uh, just want to let you know that sometimes people might say all this kind of stuff, but it's really up to you how you uh, reply to it. And if you're insensitive, if you, like, just like I said, the magic word to counter that is, that's okay, no worries, in a peaceful voice. And that can uh, tackle that sensitivity, if that makes sense. And that makes you insensitive in as, as a person. So if you need help in terms of improving on how to be more easygoing and uh, be less sensitive, I can help you. So let's talk about you now. Have you have you been making a good first impression? Are you performing the right introductory greeting? Do you feel that you're doing everything right? Or is there some mistakes that you're not noticing? Are you presenting yourself confidently? Your handshake, your focal tonality, the way you dress uh, speaks following about yourself as well. Are you professionally dressed? Are you engaging correctly with people and converting to connections? And are you able to tolerate little things but not sweating the small stuff? So what kind of these mistakes have you been most guilty of and how has this cost you? So I want to, I want to ask you guys a question now. Uh, do you want to connect using your old style or you want to try a new style, which is to correctly connect with confidence professionally? So, so type in the chat box. Do you want to use old style and hope for the best or try a new style that will be help you to be successful in the long run? All right, cool. Michael said yes, new. Okay, cool. Let's see what other people say as well. New style. Anyone else? Rose Prue Fernandez. All right. New style. Sounds interesting. Sounds good. 
new one cool no worries that's good pretty much everyone is aligned which is good and rose had new connection cool nice good job so basically like i said my promise to you is how to go from shy nervous introverted and lack of confidence to social confidence within 90 days without having to feel awkward at all and the next and this topic that i'm going to go into in the next uh content is how to converse comfortably and confidently in other words how to start interesting conversations and to uh have good conversation skills and uh, here are the pros and cons of conversation and guess what if you if you nail how to do a conversation with someone properly you will have you will promote confidence it'll be interesting it makes you relate to the receiver you have lots of things to talk about you can go past the superficial hi how are you you can make a, a great impression you can find common grounds or mutual interests etc and you can also connect at a deeper level and guess what if you don't have good conversation skills you'll make it embarrassing or be awkward nervous you can't relate to the receiver there's nothing to talk about you make a bad impression unable to find common grounds and the worst case scenario is the person running away from you and that's the and that's not, not what you want right and I like this quote, conversation about the weather is the last refuge of the imaginative. So what this means is, like if you meet someone for the first time and you talk about the weather, that's a that's not a good topic to go into because no one wants to talk about the weather, right? It's boring, that kind of stuff. So try when you first meet the, meet the person, try not to go into the weather unless it's very extreme circumstances, like it's raining cats and dogs or etc. very hot. I can't stand this weather, etc. So, and uh, taboo topics. So, when you speak to people, are you going to this kind of topics first? So, what I mean by taboo topics is topics that will not be good for conversation wise when you meet new people. So, such as religion, sex, politics, money, victim narratives, personal tragedies, and med medical issues. So, if you have been to any of these situations, talk about any of these topics with when I first meet the people, uh, sometimes people might be offended. And that's how sometimes some people might turn sensitive because of these certain topics. If that makes sense. Any questions? All right. And keep the topics of conversation general without being personal or offensive, especially when you first meet the person. So I believe when you when you first start to talk to someone for the first time, keep the topics general. So that's not uh so you're not going into taboo topics. So asking the open ended open ended questions versus close ended questions. So this is the kinds of close close ended questions, uh such as how's the weather today? Like I said earlier, uh it's good, it's bad weather. How old are you? Uh, I prefer not to say. How is your mood today? Uh, good, bad. And are you single? Why should I tell you? So all these questions is kind of close-ended questions and it becomes sensitive for the person as well. So here, here are some questions, open-ended questions that you can ask. So the purpose is to lead the conversation even further up. So, so I think some of you said just then that uh, you want to improve on your conversation skills. You don't know what to say, etc. So you can ask questions like, what are you doing over the weekend? What sports do you like doing? What hobbies do you like doing? What do you do for work? And any holiday plans coming up? So you can ask all these kinds of questions and see that conversation go longer. And I want to ask you guys a question. So would you prefer to ask open-ended questions or close-ended questions? And the questions. So type in the chat box, open or closed. Okay, cool. JP said open. Uh, Michael said open any questions. Rose said open any questions. Okay, cool. No dramas. I think everyone's on the right track. And why common interests? So the secret formula to having long conversations is common interest. It can also be known as 
mutual interests, common topics, commonalities, etc. And why should you find common interests? Because it builds intimacy and instant rapport with the person. And it'll be uh it'll be more enthusiastic and interested to talk to you. There'll be more excitement and wow factor for you and the receiver. And there'll be more smile and energy from the receiver and enjoyable experience. Uh, you'll be excited and startled to converse in the depth on the common interest that you have together. And it also has alignment as well. And here are some questions to probe for common interest. So feel free, feel free to write it down uh, to probe for common interest. So what, what do you like to do normally? What are your hobbies? What are you doing over the weekend? So all of these questions will allow you to find some commonalities with the person you're, you're conversing with. And the secret to finding common interest is to probe deeper with more questions. It's not just about, oh, okay, I like shopping as well. That's all you need to say. You need to go deeper into that topic, such as uh, where do you go shopping? What do you buy? Uh, do you like window shopping? Do you like actually go buy stuff? So you need to dig deeper on the common interest that you find with the person. And that's going to help you to have longer conversations because you have mutual interests. And guess what? The more common interests you find, more than one, the easier you can connect with the person. That's just the way it is. And this is Dippin' Do. So he's the IT professional. So he, he couldn't actually go past the superficial greeting. But I, after being coached by me to ask him the right questions, he was able to make uh, engaging and long-lasting conversations with people he meet. So let's talk about you now. Have you been conversing the right way with people you haven't met before? Have you got past the superficial chit-chat and made engaging conversations? Have you been asking the right kind of questions or are you going to taboo topics? Are you making it awkward for you in the receiver? And are you happy with your conversation skills in general? So what kind of these mistakes have you been most guilty of? And how does this cost you? So I want to so I want to ask you guys a question again. I'm pretty sure you guys want to try a new style, which is to do, which is to do things professionally from now on. And like I said before, I help people to go from shy, introverted, nervous, lack of confidence to be able to connect professionally in just 90 days without having to feel awkward. And the program that I have is actually runs for 90 days. So that's why in 90 days time, you feel a difference in your confidence around people. So, okay, Michael said, may I ask how to ask the right questions for the, for the first time to meet a chat person? So the uh the right questions I just uh, told you just there, Michael. So if I if I uh, if I go back to the slides, hold on. Uh so same example, you can ask all these like uh, common questions, so such as what do you like to do normally? What are your hobbies? What are you doing over the weekend? Or you can ask like the open ended questions, such as, yeah, like what sports do you like, what do you do for work, any holiday plans coming up? That's the kind of questions that you kind of you can ask if they make sense. Does that answer your question? Cool. No dramas. So yeah, um, so have you been conversing with the right way with people you've met, met before? Have you got past the superficial chit chat and make engaging conversations? Have you been asking the right kinds of questions or are you going to taboo topics? Are you making it awkward for you in the receiver? And are you happy with your conversation skills in general? So what kind of these mistakes have you been most guilty of? And how has this cost you? So like I said, you want to use the process of old style or you want to try a new style to do things professionally and help you. And now I'm going to go into, and are you also connecting in the right way? So I always say this to, to people. In order to connect with people, you need to know how to make an entrance all the way to making an exit. So in between that, you need to know how to make it a good first impression. You need to have, have open uh, gestures for body language. You need to have the right attitude and mindset when you talk to people. And if you want to build your network, you need, you need to start using social media, building a report online. And now we live, we live in a digital age. If you want to build your connections, you need, you need to stay in touch online with people. 
And are you having co good conversation skills? And also a good sense of humor, like the humor factor. Do you normally laugh when people when you talk to people? Do you crack jokes with people? That's that's actually uh, a good way to build trust with people as well. Because it neutralizes any tensions with the person if you have a humor factor in there as well, which I teach as well how to have a good humor around people. And, uh, and also, do you establish boundaries and bottom lines? So that's a fine line between boundaries and things you can let go of. So that's why I coach people to have a good tolerance level and only use boundaries and defend yourself when needed. So here are the pros and cons of connecting. Guess what? If you know how to uh, connect with people, guess what? You make a good first impression and uh, it builds instant rapport with people, connection make, collaboration opportunity, success, network increase, profitability potential, self-fulfillment. And guess what? If you don't know how to connect with people properly, you will make a bad impression, you'll be frustrated, Connection is burned, rapport is not built, rejection, humiliation, embarrassment, and stress. And he, this is like a cheat sheet. So this is like the one of the workshops, one day workshops that I do in person. So inside the first impression, I teach you a lot of techniques, a lot of role plays, etc. Conversation skills, body language, uh, how to have a good sense of humor, attitude, mindset, boundaries. So this is just some uh, like a cheat sheet. And yeah. This is another case study of my client. His name is Charles after doing my program. Yes, I feel this workshop has helped uh, me uh, build up some confidence and uh, build up confidence in related not just myself but other people as well. And I encourage people to really uh, look into this uh, workshop because um, Sam did a very good job uh, conducting this presentation. Um, he actually has been able to help people build up their confidence and I was once not so confident before, and now that I've gone through this workshop, I also learned a bit more about myself and how to help people. So I recommend people who really have that lack of confidence to come to this workshop, build their confidence, and build their skills, and they can, it's a valuable um, lesson for life. So yeah, thank you. All right, oh. so that's just one of my clients. So uh, let's talk about you now. Are you feeling confident or now or do you need help? Do you realize what's stopping you from making quality connections? Is there something something wrong with the way you're interacting with people? Are you just going to keep going like this or you want to do something about it? You want to change to be successful? And do you feel that your social skills are up to standards? So what kind of these mistakes have you been most guilty of and how's this cost you? So like I said before, do you want to keep using your old style or you want to use a new style, which is do things professionally from now on? And I want to draw a line in the sand. For those that are interested to, to learn to improve themselves even further, you you would want to jump, you want, would like to get out of your comfort zone and go over to the sand. But if you want to stay in comfort zone and not do anything about it, you don't don't jump over the, the sand because there's a fine line between for those that take action and want to improve and for those that just want to, they don't want to learn, just want to be miserable for the rest of their life because they're not improving, really up to you. And like I said before, I help people to go from shy, introverted, nervous, and lack of confidence to be able to connect with confidence 90 days while we are having to feel awkward. And I don't know what you, why you showed up today. It could be uh, you came to learn about how to overcome social anxiety or you just don't know how to connect with people and it's making you frustrated you need to improve on your social skills and confidence when interacting with people that matter to you are uh, you you're just naturally shy nervous and lack confidence when it comes to meeting people so lesson one now you know that when you start a conversation with people that you should go you, you shouldn't go into taboo topics that are sensitive towards others and learn how to engage better with the receiver by asking interesting questions and open-ended questions as well as finding common interests. Lesson two, now you know that when you make an entrance to connect with the receiver, don't make a bad impression by being nervous, shy, or antisocial. Make sure you connect with confidence by, by making a great first impression, such as the way you dress, talk, read, and engage professionally. 
And lesson three, that there are skills to master in, in order to connect with people. Don't just wing it and hope for the best to improve. Know your blind spots and follow a proven system that you can connect, can it confirm and increase your chances to make connections that can last a lifetime and also to increase your network. So it comes out to the obvious question. How do I do it? And I want to ask you guys a question again. Do you want to use the process of trial and error or follow a proven system to help you out? So what does actually a system mean? So when you've got a system, your results are much quicker because it saves you substantial time, energy, and money. And uh, for those that want to give my program a go, um, that's actually a difference between interest and commitment. So when you're interested in doing something, you only do it when it's convenient. But when you're committed to doing something, you accept no excuses at all. So like I said before, in the earlier stages, I asked you which of these resonates with you. And if you, uh, if any of this clicks into you, you're qualified for me to coach you in terms of improving your social skills and decreasing your social anxiety. And uh, yeah, in so the, uh, the system is called the Magnetic Program. I won't go into it uh, right now, but uh, what I want to say is um, just uh, what I'm going to do now is if you're interested to talk to me further on how you can improve your social skills and I want you want you want to do my program. I'm actually offering you a free social skills assessment session today. It's valued at one hundred and ninety eight dollars. So basically, this uh, social skills assessment session is designed to see where you're at at the moment in terms of social skills and whether you need to help to build your confidence. And I map out a plan for you to decrease your social anxiety and as well as how to engage with people, so you can be more confident around people. So in order to uh, schedule a, a free social skills assessment, uh, this is the Calendly link, as you can see here, uh, Calendly.com, uh, Sam, Sam Lee Connected Confidence. Uh, let me just check. All right, so it's the 30 minutes. All right, so if you're interested further, I'm going to pay I'm going to uh, paste uh this um this website and then uh you can actually uh schedule a uh free social skills assessment for me Com compliments from me today so uh I'll, I'll just put on a chat box uh, all you need to do is uh, click on this um click on this uh Canonly link and then schedule a time with me uh, this week sometime. And then I can conduct the uh, half an hour uh, social skills assessment and to see whether this program is, is a direct fit for you or not. So it's kind of like an audition, whether you need help. All right. So that's pretty much my part. Did you guys have any questions? If you have any questions uh, about any of my content or my uh, assessment session, uh, feel free to uh, type something now. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to pass the stage to Roy right now. Uh, I'll just give you... Uh, so if you want to type in the chat box and mute yourself, any content about social skills, communication skills, feel free to type now. So the cost of the program the 90 days program, I'm actually doing a special deal. So um, the cost will be around uh, 3,500 and it actually lasts for three months. Uh, so that's 90 days. So my normal my normal price is actually $6,000. But if you're interested further, uh, I'm actually doing less than half price. So around $3,500. And then you get a coaching session with me. And Royce, if you want to talk uh, further, just send me a message and then I can contact you. Or uh, just send me your number if you want. And then we'll have a chat later on. All right. So I hope that uh, answers you, Rose. And uh, yeah, if, I, if you guys don't have any questions, I'm going to pass the stage on to Roy 
and he's gonna share his part. Thank you. Thank you for listening today. I hope you got something out of it. And let's get Roy up here. Roy, are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'll put you as host. Uh, yeah. Welcome, John. I appreciate you joining in, John. Hi, yeah. Uh... Right on time for Roy's one. <laughs> well, right. yeah, I don't know what's been on until now, so let's just go ahead. That's okay. Right. All right, so Roy, you're, you're, you're good to go. And just a real quick question. um, John, where are you joining us from? From London. From London, wonderful. And I think I've seen you before, you. right? Yeah, have you? Well, on one of these meetings? Yes. Possibly. I, I don't know. I can't say I've seen you. You're Roy Kwan. I think you've... I had an email from you. I don't know if you recognize me from there. Possibly. And um, Yeah, but I mean, you wouldn't have seen me, would you? So, I, quite honestly, I don't remember you, unfortunately, but uh, it's part of my autism that I um don't easily remember what people look like. That's okay. And... Um, Michael, uh, Michael, where, where, where are you joining us from? Meet up. Okay. Wonderful. All right. So, oh shit. Start my, start my presentation. So hello everyone, my name is Roy Kwan, I'm a business and life coach and today I'll be talking about empowerment and resilience. Mm -hmm. And so I'll first start by sharing a bit about my background and why I do what I do. So first of all, my in terms of where I'm from, so my mom is from Singapore and my dad is from what's from Hong Kong and I was born in Australia in a small country rural town called Kuma, population of 8,000. And my mom loves to tell this joke. The best thing about having all her kids born in Kuma is that she didn't have to worry about a baby mix up in the hospital. There were no other Asian babies within a hundred kilometer radius. If I were to level with you though, Growing up in Kuma was very tough for me. So other than my brother and my sister, we were the only Chinese kids at school. And I experienced a lot of bullying and teasing. Kids I didn't know would come up to me, pull their eyes back, and call me Ching Chong Chinaman. I had a bully who would beat me up and pull my pants down. But the worst thing they'll do you tell other kids not to be my friend. And as a result of this, I spent a lot of my lunch breaks and recess sitting by myself, feeling isolated, feeling not good enough, feeling anxious, and really seeing myself as the ugly duckling. My biggest breakthrough came when my mom sent me to Singapore for one year and three years in Hong Kong. And as you can imagine, in those countries, I didn't look different. All the other kids had black hair, brown eyes, Asian. Though I was still different because I was from Australia. And that was a cool difference. Other kids would want to befriend me to improve their English. But I found that the friends who became my lifelong friends didn't like me because of where I was from. They like me for who I am. And as a result of this, I became very confident, very friendly. When I came back to Australia, I was able to stand up to the bullies, which meant that I got into a lot of fights in high school. And there were times where I felt like I lost the fight and I felt bruised, sore, hurt. But what was interesting was all these other kids would come and congratulate me because they hated the bully too. And what was more important was I learned how to make friends. And since then, 
I've created a happy and balanced life for myself. I have a loving wife of 10 years. We just celebrated our 10 year anniversary last week. I have a beautiful seven year old daughter. I have five investment properties and I had a successful corporate career, which I left behind to run my own coaching business. And there's one question which drives me. And that question is, what if? What if I wasn't able to break out of my old self to become who I am today? What if I was stuck being the boy who lacked confidence, who didn't feel good enough, who didn't have any friends? And when I think of that boy, I think of another classmate of mine in Hong Kong. And he also didn't have any friends. Other kids would jump out of the way to avoid him because he had bad breath and dandruff. And because I knew what it was like to not have any friends, I made an effort to befriend him. When other kids didn't want him as part of a group project or ask him to join mine, when he went to a different class or look for him during recess to give him a game of chess, and when I came back to Australia, I messaged him on ICQ, which is a very old version of Messenger. Unfortunately, I lost contact with him. And a few years later, I found out from friends that he passed away from suicide. And had I known back then what I know today around mindset, I could have absolutely have helped him. And that's why it's my mission to help anyone anywhere in the world to heal their wounds from the past so that they can live their lives to their full potential. And that in turn enables me to live my life to my full potential. And so if you know anyone who needs help in Australia, please encourage them to reach out to the wonderful support services we have here. There's Lifeline, Beyond Blue, Men's Line Australia, Suicide Callback Line. There's Kids Helpline, Headspace, Blue Knot for Complex PTSD, and Cure Life for people of different sexual orientations. And in the UK, there's the Samaritans, there's Calm, Campaign Against Living Miserably, there's paperless, there's childline, and there's SOS. And so a bit more about myself and my qualifications. So similar to Sam, I'm certified in Neuro Linguistic Programming, NLP. I'm also certified in Timeline Therapy, Hypnotherapy, and I've been trained as a life coach, a business coach, entrepreneur coach, public speaking coach, wellness coach and relationship coach. And I integrate all these disciplines together to help my clients to align their internal and external resources towards their desired goals and outcomes. NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, is the language of the mind and how we communicate to ourselves and others. And by changing our negative self-talk, we can make rapid changes to our emotional state which drives our behaviors, which drives our decisions, and ultimately the results we create in our lives. Like coaches of peak performance athletes, I'm here to give you the edge, the extra push and the acceleration towards the achievement of your desired goals and outcomes. And so the first thing I'd like to talk to you about is emotional triggers. And I'll start with a story. So 11 years ago, I was still dating my wife-to-be, uh, my girlfriend at the time. And for those in, in Sydney, I uh, they'll know this place. I took her on a date to at Bicentennial Park, near Hombush, near Sydney Olympic Park. And I had this spontaneous idea to rent a tandem bike, a bicycle with two seats. And I got on in the front 
and my wife to be, my girlfriend, at the back. And the first thing we did was we went down this steep hill. And as we were going down this steep hill, I noticed this big pole in front of us. And I was trying to decide, should I go left or should I go right? Should I go left or right? Left or right, left or right, left or right, left or right. Crash. I crashed straight into the pole. And this was before I did any work on my mindset. And back then I had this critical voice in my mind, which would question every decision that I make. And often it would keep me stuck. Something as simple as getting a handyman to install a TV in one of my investment properties. I would spend the whole day regretting it because I would think to myself, oh, he installed it too high and now it's too late. And it's going to be too much hassle to drill new holes and make it lower. And I spent the whole day kicking myself, really feeling bad about myself and, and really questioning what, you know, that it wasn't perfect. In reality, it probably didn't matter so much because it was an investment property. I didn't live there. And um, with tenants, it's probably safer to have a TV higher up. So they're less likely to bump into it. But, but, but back then I had this really negative thought pattern which would really keep me in a really bad state of mind when something like this occurred. And it wasn't until I did the mindset work did I realize that this critical voice in my mind didn't belong to me. It belonged to my mom. And my mom has always been critical of herself and others. And by recognizing that this critical voice didn't belong to me, took me one step to silencing it. Have you heard of Bruce Lee? So Bruce Lee at the, was a very famous martial artist. And when he was at the peak of his career, all these martial artists will ask Bruce Lee to coach them. And Bruce, Bruce Lee would turn them away. Bruce Lee would say, I cannot teach you because your cup is full. First empty your cup and then you can learn. So what I'd love all of you to do, all of you to do today is to empty your cup, switch off your critical voice and really allow yourself both consciously and unconsciously to learn new concepts. Today I'll be sharing lots of nuggets of gold and I'd like you to see these different pieces of information like a puzzle. And at the end you can bring all these different puzzles together, all these pieces of information to enable you to have a breakthrough when it comes to releasing anxiety. And so here's a question for all of you to ponder on. What is the most powerful thing to unlearn from school? I'd like you to think for, for a few seconds and then type in the chat. What is the most powerful thing to unlearn from school? And it's not what what are the what's the most powerful thing to learn from school? No, it's the most powerful thing to unlearn from school. At school, we're taught a lot of things, but not all of it is useful. So I'd love you to type in the chat when it comes to things to unlearn from school. What is the most powerful thing to unlearn from school? Any ideas? Any thoughts? Conformity. 
that is definitely one thing to unlearn from school. And me, um, and that's something I can relate to, uh, me being Asian, growing up in a very white town, I definitely conformed when it came to my cultural identity. And I was very fortunate to have those experiences living overseas to reconnect with my cultural roots, my ethnic roots. And I'll give everyone 10 more seconds. If you want to put in an answer, type it in now, and then I'll reveal the answer. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. So the number one thing to unlearn from school is making mistakes is a bad thing. Rejection is a bad thing. Failure is a bad thing. So you think about the school grading system. 50% is a pass. 100% is perfect. Well, in real life, that's not always achievable, especially when trying something new or doing something for the first time. For example, if you were to apply for 20 jobs and you only got one job offer, that's a success. But if you follow the old school mentality, that's less than 50%. That's a fail. That's not even close to 100%. That's not perfect or you've been rejected 19 times, what are you doing? But in reality, it's okay to make mistakes in life. It's okay to be rejected. There is no failure, only feedback. And if you're not making mistakes or you're not getting rejected, then you, you really need to question yourself whether or not you're taking action outside of your comfort zone whether you're truly learning and growing. Because true growth happens outside of your comfort zone. It's very uncomfortable. Another thing to unlearn from school is, or well, unlearn from growing up as children is often as children, we're taught to control our emotions. We're taught to suppress our emotions. And the problem with suppressing our emotions, it's like pushing a beach ball underwater. The more you push it down, the more the pressure builds. The more you push it down, the more the pressure builds. The more you push it down, the more the pressure builds until something bumps us. And it can be something inconsequential in the grand scheme of things, but the beach ball bursts out of the water. And that's essentially what a panic attack is when you've suppressed fear for too long or an angry outburst when you've suppressed anger for too long or an onset of long depression when you've suppressed sadness for too long. And holding on to these emotions isn't just bad for our mental health, it's terrible for our physical health. And so a healthier approach is to learn to release these emotions and be free. So here's an exercise for all of you to participate in. And even if you don't want to type your answers in the chat, I'd like you to write them down on a piece of paper. The, the more you write down, the more you can get out of your head and become aware of the conscious patterns beneath. A problem well-defined is a problem half-solved. So here's the first question for you guys to ask yourself. What is it that triggers you? What triggers you? What triggers you emotionally? And what are the negative thought patterns around this? When you peel back the layers of the onion, what's happening beneath the surface? What are the negative thought patterns behind, beneath your emotional triggers? And how does your body physically tell you that you are being triggered? What are your anxious actions? And what are the negative outcomes due to your anxious actions? 
But let me share with you a personal example. So before I started my own coaching business, I used to work as a business improvement lead consultant. So often I'll give presentations to uh, CEO, C-level executives. And there was one time when I was presenting to the chief marketing officer of a very large organization. And I, and I remember when I was presenting, I could feel my heart racing, my heart beating really fast. And I could feel my face getting flushed. And I, can, I could hear myself stuttering. And when I think back to that time, I had this negative thought pattern, which would run in my unconscious mind, which was, I wasn't good enough. Who was I to present to you know, this person, this senior executive? And what was interesting was, you know, I had spent months preparing this report and I knew the content inside and out. And, and my boss at the time told me it was the best, you know, it was the best work he'd seen for me at that time. And yet I couldn't stop these emotional triggers and I felt stuck. And when it came to my anxious actions, back then I had a very short temper. And I would um, often eat comfort food, so lots of chocolate. And the negative outcomes due to those anxious actions, well, in hindsight, there, there probably were lots of opportunities for me to promote myself, but I didn't promote myself as well as I could. And this prevented me from going for job promotions or going applying for higher paying jobs elsewhere. And so I'd like all of you to do some self-reflection. What is it that triggers you? How does your body physically tell you that you're being triggered? What are the negative thought patterns running in your mind? What are your anxious actions? And what are the negative outcomes due to those anxious actions? And if you're willing to, please feel free to share your answers in the chat. By sharing your answers, not only are you helping yourself, but you're helping others by understanding that they are not alone. You are not alone. And even if you don't want to share, uh, overthinking, yes. I can definitely relate to overthinking. And that would often um give me insomnia. I'll be awake at 2 a.m. in the morning just overthinking things. Would anyone else like to share their answers? Yeah. Yeah, overthinking that leads to impulse action doing things which I might later regret. Feeling little. Thank you everyone for sharing. And, and even if you're not comfortable sharing, please take the time, really take the time to write down your answers because what I'm sharing with you isn't knowledge. These are exercises, exercises to retrain, reprogram your mind. And so the next question, which I'd like all of you to ask yourselves is, Think of a child coming to you with the same or similar problems that you've just described. What will you tell them? 
And so they may, it may not necessarily be exactly the same problem, but similar. So imagine a young child coming to you and they said that they, they, they couldn't stop overthinking things or they couldn't stop taking impulse action or they were feeling little. What would you say to a young child experiencing these challenges? And I'd love you to type your answers of support, of encouragement that you would give to a young child. And the answers that you would give to a young child would be the same answers that you can give to yourself. And in case you're wondering, uh, this is a photo of my daughter. Uh, and next to her is a life-size painting, which I painted of her. And this was the probably the first painting I did since primary school. And the beauty of doing all this mindset work is everything becomes easier once you've cleared these negative thoughts. So once you've written them down, you reframe them and you, you find ways to clear them, to let them go, everything becomes so easier, so much easier. And so, for example, when I picked up the paintbrush, instead of thinking I can't paint, I had a belief that I can paint whatever I want. I can do whatever I set my mind to. And so I painted this life-size portrait of my daughter. So imagine a young child coming to you with these challenges. What would you say to support them? Okay. So I'm going to move on to the next session, next section, which is on releasing anxiety. So the first thing I'd like all of you to do is to not think of a pink elephant. Do not think of a pink elephant. Whatever you do, don't think of a pink elephant. Try really hard and don't think of a pink elephant. Stop thinking of a pink elephant. So how many of you are thinking of a pink elephant or an elephant or another type of animal? So the thing with the subconscious mind is it's really bad at processing negatives. So when you tell yourself, don't think of a pink elephant, you're going to think of a pink elephant. Don't feel stressed, you're going to feel stre stressed. Don't feel anxious, you're going to feel anxious. Don't crash into a tree, and I crashed into that tree. So the key when it comes to managing anxiety is to focus on what you want to happen as opposed to what you don't want to happen. Anxiety comes from focusing and obsessing over the worst case scenario, overthinking about the worst case scenario. And it's okay to think of the worst case scenario some of the time because it allows you to plan, prepare, manage risks, take out insurances, contingency, etc. But the problem with focusing on the worst case scenario all of the time is it keeps us stuck, makes us procrastinate, and we lose out on so many opportunities. And so this is why I've created my version of the 80-20 rule. And this 80-20 rule is simply this. 20% of the time, allow yourself to focus on the worst case scenario for those reasons I mentioned before to plan, prepare, take out insurance, etc. But for the other 80% of the time, focus on what you want to happen and what you can do to make those best case scenarios happen. The most successful people in the world only ask themselves two questions. What do I want and how can I get it? That's it. They only ask themselves, what do I want and how can I get it? They don't ask themselves, what do I don't want and how can I not get it? No, 
They only ask themselves, what do I want and how can I get it? So what I'd love all of you to do is to take the time to write down what are your worst case scenarios? What are the situations which give you anxiety? What do you fear? And after you write down all of your worst case scenarios, or at least write the top one to three, next to them, I would like you to write down what are your best case scenarios, which are typically the opposite of your worst case scenarios. So writing down your worst case scenarios then writing down the opposite. So write down the best case scenario. So what is it that you want to happen? And then next to that, I want you to write down what can you do to make this, make your best case scenarios happen? What can you do to make your best case scenarios happen? And feel free to type your answers in the chat or ask me if you have any questions around this exercise. So again, as I said before, what I'm sharing with you isn't information. These are exercises to do. Your mindset, you, you, you can treat your mind as a muscle. And these are exercises you can do to make them stronger. And so you don't get strong by um, going to the gym and watching other people exercise. Or you don't learn how to swim by going to a swimming pool and watch other people swim. When it comes to mindset, it's all around exercising your mind. So I'd love you all to exercise your mind by really considering, thinking about, reflecting on what are your worst case scenarios? What are your best case scenarios? And what can you do to make your best case scenarios happen? And even if you don't want to type your answers in the chat, can you just type a Y in the chat or a yes, just to make sure that you've completed this exercise before I move on to the next one. Or if, you, if you're feeling stuck, feel free to ask a question in the chat as well. Is everyone awake? Ah, thank you. Um, so number one, worst case scenario is not achieving my goals. Best case scenario is to create an online business and how to do it, upskill and learn how to create it. Love it. And, and I coach lots of entrepreneurs when it comes to starting their online business. So really spend 80% of your time focus on creating your online business and upskilling and learn how to create it. And feel free to have a chat with me later in that on how to do it. Wonderful. So when it comes to setting goals, it can feel like we're climbing a massive mountain and our goals are at the top of this mountain. And it can take us days or months or even weeks to get to the top. And the question to ask yourselves is, every night when you pitch your tent to rest, do you pitch your tent with the opening, the flap, facing up the mountain or down the mountain? So more often than not, we pitch our tents facing up the mountain so that we can see where we need to go every morning. But the challenge with this is we also see how far we have to go. 
and that can lead to stress and overwhelm and anxiety. So what we can do instead is to allow ourselves to look down the mountain, to see the challenges we've overcome, to feel proud of our accomplishments, and to enjoy the view. And so when it comes to releasing anxiety, this is it. This is the most powerful technique when it comes to releasing anxiety. So it's a technique which you need to practice, you need to exercise. You can choose to exercise to become strong at it. And I'll explain to you how it works. So more often than not, anxiety comes from looking out into the future and worrying about the future scenarios and the unknowns. And so to release anxiety, what we can allow ourselves to do, to do is to float after the event, after the successful completion of the event, and look back towards now. And can look back, you know, a few days, a few months, a few years after the event and look back. And you think about it, when you look back at the events from the past, they don't bother you so much anymore. But when you think about the events in the future, they give you anxiety. And I'll give a couple of examples. So there was one lady who I helped and she had panic attacks, which was so bad that she'll be stuck in bed. And she'll have to call her boss and say, sorry, I can't come to work. And after I helped her to release a limiting belief that she wasn't strong enough and replace it with a positive belief that she was strong, I took her through this process. And I looked at her emotional triggers. And for her, what, what triggered a panic attack in her was the thought that her two young girls could become victims of pedophilia. And whenever these intrusive thoughts came into her mind, she'd have a panic attack. And so what I did with her was I taught her to visualize herself going way out into the future way out into the future where she's essentially an old lady and her two young daughters have grown up to be adult women and they've married husbands who respect them who treat them well and keep them safe and the two young daughters are now grown women and they have children themselves and the daughters are safe and the grandchildren are safe and they all live in the same community and they're out enjoying a barbecue and everyone feels safe and everyone feels protected. And when I describe this vision in with all the details, this lady broke down crying, tears of relief. And I wish I had recorded that session because afterwards she said, wow, I now understand why you charge so much. And what was interesting was after that, whenever I caught up with her, I would ask her, have you experienced a panic attack since? And she said, no. Whenever she felt one coming up, she would immediately think of that vision and the panic attack would disappear. Another example. So many years ago, I went to the Philippines on holidays and one of my friends spent months packing her suitcase. She had planned for every day, every activity, for every cycle of the month, she was going to, what clothes she was going to wear. But what happened was the airline we flew on left our luggage in Hong Kong. So when we arrived in the Philippines, we had no luggage. And my friend was freaking out. She was saying, F this, F that, F airline. I told her to use the word fornicate instead of the typical effort just to make it sound funnier. Anyway, um, yeah, the next day we went to the Mall of Asia and went shopping and bought like lots of clothes. And what, what's interesting is many years later, when we still catch up as friends, we, we talk about this memory and even for her, she sees the funny side of it. And so when you allow yourself to float after the event, 
and look back towards that event, you can release and let go of the anxiety. And so now I'll guide you through the process on how to do it. So even though you're on mute and you don't have your cameras on, I highly encourage that you participate in this activity. And so the first step is to take a deep breath in and out. And take a deep breath in and out. And take a deep breath in and out. And the first thing I'd like you to do is to ask your unconscious mind where your past and where your future is in relation to your body. You might say left or right, up or down, in front, behind, diagonal, spiral, any direction. And it's your unconscious concept that we're interested in, not your conscious concept. So I'd like you to ask your unconscious mind where your past is, trusting your intuition, your instinct, your gut feeling, and point towards that direction. Physically point towards that direction. And now I'd like you to point towards your future. And now I'd like you to just relax. Relax your hands, relax your body. And I'd like you to take a deep breath in, and out. And take a deep breath in. And out. And take a deep breath in. And out. And allow yourself to float way up high above your body. And take a deep breath in and out. And keep floating higher and higher. And as you keep breathing deeply higher and floating higher and higher, I'd like you to double your height and double your height again. Really see yourself floating up high like you're in a hot air balloon, floating higher and higher. Floating way up high above the soft, fluffy clouds. And floating way up high into space. And I'd like you to notice in space there's nothing. There's no pressure. There's no colors. There's no sounds. There's no friction. There's no distractions. There's no voices. There's no stories. There's nothing. There's silence and twinkling stars all around you. And I'd like you to notice the twinkling stars all around you disappearing one at a time until you have a clear blank canvas. And now I'd like you to float out into the future after the successful completion of the event that you were anxious about. And I'd like you to float a few seconds after that event, a few hours, a few days, a few weeks, maybe a few months, maybe a few years, and then turn around and look back towards now. See what you can see, hear what you can hear, and feel what you can feel. Is the anxiety still there or has it disappeared? And if, it's, if you can't see the successful completion of the event happening, that's okay. See the worst case scenario happening. And then see yourself recovering from this event, learning from this event, becoming wiser from this event, becoming stronger from this event. And see how this event happened for you, not to you. And see yourself in a few years' time achieving your goals. See yourself at the top of the mountain, looking down at the mountain, looking down the mountain, seeing the challenges that you've overcome. 
and feeling proud of your progress, feeling proud of your accomplishments and really enjoying the view. And notice that you had all the resources you needed to succeed. All you needed to do was to activate them. And now I'd like you to drift down, way down, relax now. Just allowing your entire body to rest and relax. And as you go even deeper, all distractions just seem to disappear. And I want you to concentrate on your breathing, breathing in pure relaxation and exhaling all the tension in the body. Feel all the tension leaving the chest area as you exhale. Feel yourself relaxing even deeper with each and every breath. And your breathing is so regular, so easy and effortless. And you are relaxing more and more. And your entire body is completely and totally relaxing as you drift even deeper down with each and every breath. And you feel a warm, wonderful sense of relaxation and going even deeper down. And you may have noticed that some areas of the body are more easy to relax. And concentrating on these areas of the body now that you find to be the most comfortable, very relaxed, and concentrating on these areas now, you are recognizing and realizing what there is about those areas that make you so comfortable and so very relaxed and feeling all the sensations in those areas, the most relaxed and comfortable parts of your body. And allowing and feeling the comforting sensations of the most relaxed areas of the body begin to spread. And as this warm, wonderful, marvelous feeling of relaxation spreads to other parts of the body, the feeling of relaxation becomes stronger and the relaxation spreads out beyond those areas, continuing to spread to all the parts of the body you desire to relax deeper and even deeper. Picture and imagine the relaxation spreading like the rays of sun, gently warming and relaxing like the rings of water spreading from a pebble toss into a gentle pond. And the relaxation spreading to every muscle, cell, fiber, and bone in your body. And you are enjoying this tranquil and peaceful relaxation in every part of your body. And with every passing moment, this feeling of deep, tranquil, and comforting relaxation becomes stronger, and every cell, nerve, and part of your body knows and enjoys this wonderful sensation. And this wonderful feeling now goes out beyond the physical confines of your body spreading out beyond the skin to form a protective shield around you. And you can let this feeling spread far, far beyond your physical body or keep it close like a second skin. And since this protective shield or bubble is your own creation, you can do with it what you wish. You can use this shield in any way you want to. And the uses of this shield are limitless. It can act as a filter to filter out those feelings or things going on around you. And filtering situations that are uncomfortable and allowing you to let in those feelings you wish to let in and experience. And it can act as an amplifier to help you understand people 
and to help people understand you. And this protective bubble can be invisible or visible to a few people or as many people as you want it to be. And you are using this protective shield any way you choose to use it. And that is okay because this shield is your own creation and you are using this shield and enjoying comfort in every part of your body, practicing and using this shield and allowing it to spread, allowing it to go beyond the confines of your physical body. And you can experiment with it, making it as large as you like, using it as a transport to another place or time. And the more you use it, the stronger it becomes. And realizing now that when I awaken you, you can return to this place of peace, tranquility, and deep relaxation, and use this shield anytime you desire to do so. And you are using this shield and feeling the relaxation spreading to all the parts of your body. In a moment, I'll be counting backwards from 10 to 1, and I'd like you to awaken one-tenth of the way until you are fully present and back into the now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one. Welcome back. How do you feel? Feel free to type in the chat. How do you feel now? Calm, relax. Very good. Awesome. Thank you. And now, now I'd like to share some education on how to create long lasting transformation in our emotional state and to have authentic, genuine confidence. And we can achieve this by detoxing our mind from all these emotions, these negative emotions, the emotion detox. And to understand how to detox our mind, it's helpful to understand the root cause of our negative thinking, the root cause of our negative emotional beliefs and limiting thought patterns. And to understand this, it's useful to understand the Macy's development period. So more often than not, the root cause of our negative emotional patterns and limiting beliefs come from our childhood. And especially between the ages of zero to seven. When we're that young, we don't have any emotional filters. We don't have a critical factor. So anything that's said to us or happens to us our subconscious mind accepts as the truth. And that can form a debilitating pattern for the rest of our lives or until we have a breakthrough. The next period after the imprint period is the, the modeling period. And this is between seven to 14. And this is when we start having our heroes, people we idolize, and we either accept their model really great behavior or we reject behaviors from previous models. The next period is the socialization period, and that's from 14 to 21. This is when our critical factor is fully formed. We become the nodal, the rebellious teenager. And the reason why the critical factor there is for protection as we go out into the wider world.
And so here's one last self-reflection activity for you to think about. So I'd like you to write down what is it that prevents you from achieving your goals? What is it that prevents you from achieving what you want in life? What is stopping you? And then I'd like you to think about what are your parents' most limiting beliefs? What are your parents' most limiting beliefs? And what are your most limiting beliefs? And why are you committed to releasing these limiting beliefs? And examples of limiting beliefs is I'm not good enough, I can't do this, I'm stuck. And so why are you committed to releasing these limiting beliefs? What has it cost you in the past indulging in these limiting beliefs? And what will it cost you in the future if you don't take new action to let go of these limiting beliefs? And so when it comes to releasing our negative emotional patterns and limiting beliefs, I'd like you to see, visualize a tree. And this tree has five core branches. And those are the major negative emotions, anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt. And there underneath it can be limiting beliefs such as not good enough, I can't do this, perfectionism, imposter. I'm an imposter. And these are all rooted in the past. Anxiety, on the other hand, is future-based. Of all the emotions to release, anxiety is the easiest one. That's why I can do it in a workshop. But when it comes to these core negative emotions, anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt, they require one-to-one -one coaching because we, we because of how ingrained they are in our past, in our subconscious mind. And so in order to release them, this is a process I take my clients through. So typically when we look at the past, we're in the present facing the past in position number one. And what I love to do is to get my clients to see the event from position number two, where they're way up high above this event, looking down at this event. And this is how my approach is different from traditional counseling, psychology, psychotherapy, etc. Because in those techniques, traditional techniques, they get you to relive the event. And the problem with reliving the event is you become highly emotional. And when you increase emotion, you decrease intelligence. The opposite is also true. If you decrease emotions, you can e increase intelligence. And we can achieve a higher level of intelligence by being able to float way up high, separate ourselves from the event, look down at the event, and really observe it, see it as an external third-person perspective. And then from this perspective, we can find new positive learnings, new insights so that we can change the meaning of the story. And by changing the meaning of the story, we can change the energy associated with it and let go of those limiting beliefs and negative emotional patterns. And then I like to get my clients to float before these events and the chain of events that led to these events. Recall who they were before these events occurred. A wonderful example are children. So when you think about babies and toddlers, they're naturally born with confidence, curiosity, adventure. They break things and they don't care. And that's the mindset you need for business. But what happens is often we take on external programming, BS, and we lose connection with that inner confidence. And when I say BS, I mean uh, belief systems, but also bullshit. And so by reconnecting with this energy, with the, who you were before these events, we can help you to reconnect with your true authentic confidence. You don't need to fake confidence, you actually are. And when we're confident that we've released the negative emotion, then we go into the event, into position number four. And we see what we see, hear what we hear, feel what we feel. And typically the negative emotion is gone or almost completely gone. And if there's remnants of the emotions to that, that's fine. We can still repeat the process, go to position two and three, 
until it's completely gone. And I like to tell my housekeepers to treat me like a housekeeper. I like to tell my clients to treat me like a housekeeper. So I'm here to clear every speck and dust which doesn't belong in your unconscious mind. Like imagine if someone came into your living room and dumped a lot of junk on your living room floor. Not only would you chuck them out, you chuck out the junk with them as well. And so that's the same with our subconscious mind. We can chuck out the junk and the critical voices and the negative influences which don't belong in our living room. And so here are a few of my client testimonials. So Roy, uh, this one's from Omar. Roy is amazing at helping uncover limiting beliefs and working through any root causes of trauma, really understand them, see them from space and let them go. Highly recommend for anyone needing to grow and let go of stuff which have been holding them back from self-actualizing. The next testimony is from Maxine. Working with Roy has really transformed my thinking around money and wealth. His timeline therapy approach was especially valuable in terms of understanding where some of my attitudes to money and my relationship with it have come from. And then from Sai, Roy helped me during my difficult times to overcome binge eating and drinking. He cleaned up my mind, helped me to exercise and lose 10 kilograms of weight. Even today, if I need any help in business or personal life, he's just a call away. And then Tanya, uh, with, with Tanya, she had insomnia for three years. And after I helped her to clear all those negative emotions, she had no trouble sleeping after that. She no longer needed to take sleeping medication and she works as a night shift nurse. The next one is Ray. Uh, this is what she said. Um, I have been working with Roy for the past few months now and the work he's put to help me with releasing childhood trauma Anger and sadness has transformed my life. I have a better perspective on career, family, and friends, and most importantly, myself. Roy is both nurturing and challenging as he opens you up to certain truths which have been transformative. His work has enabled me to see a new lease on life. And then the last one from Nave. After my first session with Roy, I noticed a fundamental change in my negative thinking. I have many cognitive behavioral therapy sessions with various psychologists, 16 in fact, which were fine. But this is the first time I'd noticed a deep, long lasting change in my thoughts and mindset. I would highly recommend this type of therapy if like me, you have a long history of anxiety and need to get to the root cause. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation from today and all of the exercises. Highly recommend you book a one-to-one, -one, a free one-to-one -one call with me. Uh, you can use this QR code or I'll put in the link in the chat as well. So you can book a free one-to-one -one coaching session with me. And in this introductory coaching session, I'll help you to uncover where you're in and out of balance in life help you to understand where your mental blockages are or emotional leakages and loosen the grip on them and then help you to set a, a goal which really inspires and motivates you and gain really clar gain clarity in terms of where you want to head towards in life. Here's my email address. And are there any questions for me? Or are there any questions for me and Sam? And you can scan the QR code in the bottom right or um, click on the link in the chat or copy, it, copy and paste it for later so that if you ever, so that you can book in a chat with me. Highly recommend you book in a chat with myself or Sam. So questions. Now is the opportunity to ask any questions you like. Feel free to type in the chat or type or type what were the best things from this session today or your key takeaways. 
Yeah. So um, yeah, thanks for having that presentation. And uh, now it's gonna be more of a Q and A. Any questions? If you wanna join a, a clarity session, like assessment sessions or clarity session, strategy session, uh, yeah, feel free to talk to us now. Or you have any questions, uh, like from the quite uh from today's presentations, please let us know. Otherwise, you're free to go. <laughs> Yes, self-reflection is the key for development. And sometimes it helps to have a guide to help you to self-reflect, to take you to the next level. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Natalia. Thank you very much, Roy. I'll see you around. You're welcome. Okay. See you at the Sydney okay. Side of Hub. <laughs> see you soon. Have a lovely weekend, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Rose. Hey, John. Yeah, I Rose. hope you found it useful, Rose, and I hope that um the person you're caring for, um you can encourage to come along to one of our workshops, or book in a chat with either of us one to one. The real magic happens in the one to one session. What we've just shared is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, that's it. Hey John. Hi, yeah, all right. Okay. If there's no questions, we'll head off then. Well, I haven't really been here, unfortunately. I'm like I'm in London, as you as I say. So I'm a, it's night time here. So I'm just sort of on my way to bed. But I do. Are you all in Australia there? Ah, uh, yes, yes, we're in Australia. Everybody except me. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. So you, Sam. Um... Well, somebody else on there. I think she's gone. Yeah, she's gone. Right. So it's not as if it's daytime. So I'm. I was just wondering what it was. I mean, it's been. I don't know. I mean, the meetup record had something about inspired breakthroughs London, but it's yes. It's so it's an it's, it's an international it's an international event. Oh yeah. yeah, but it's not actually. It's not as if you're in London. I don't know why it said London there. I could understand. Oh. That it's, 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 yeah. I created a group for London so that people in the UK can attend as well. Yeah, sure. But it is sort of, you know, almost six o'clock in the morning. So, yeah. you know, there's not going to be a lot, of, a lot of people coming from this country. And those who yeah. like me, I thought... Yeah, I, I told Sam that. Like, like, I think for London, it needs to be later in the day. Hmm. Or early in the previous day. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, so, you know, I don't know. You might put something on a... You yeah. might just at night and then have, have a meeting with us. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> thank you for the feedback, John. And thank you for waking up early to join us. Oh, I'm still up from yesterday. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to oh, oh uh, or staying up late or whatever. <laughs> okay, I, I got to head off. Um, so um, I hope to see you again next time. See you, John. Okay, but I'll see you then. Okay, you. then. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.